I'm Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association practice the Buddhist teachings as taught by the 13th century Japanese Buddhist sage Nichiren Shonen. It is Nichiren that teaches us that it is the Lotus Sutra that is the highest of the Buddhist teachings. And Nichiren teaches us that we should only practice, the only sutra we should practice is the Lotus Sutra. Now, we are the Black Buddhist force in America, and we are unapologetically black. My lecture today, Science and History, The Buddha Was Black. The Buddha! was born in Magadha. Magadha in ancient India come from the Harappan civilization and the Harappan civilization were black people. Now, a man by the name of Sisu Naga, Sisu Naga founded the Magadha Empire. And later we read about Bimbo Sara, who was a contemporary of Shaka Muni and Buddha. Ladies and gentlemen, we have archaeological, anthropological, genetic history, literary science to show that the Buddha was a black man. Just look at the statue of the Buddha and you see that black hair on the Buddha. Now, Dasaki Kano, in his book called The Living Buddha, he writes that the Buddha come from an Indo-Aryan cultural spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that at the time of the Buddha, there was no Indo-Aryans in India. There is no archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science to tell you, that tells you or verifies that there were any white people in India at the time. That's how Kikeda's book, The Living Buddha. It is an interpretive, fictional book about the Buddha. But yet, that's how Kikeda uses his prestige to spread a lie. We can go even 150 years after the death of the Buddha in the time of the father of history. That's Herodotus, who wrote, there were two Ethiopians, one east of the Red Sea and one west of the Red Sea. The word India means black. Please understand, we can go 150 years before the time of the Buddha and the time of Homer. In the time of Homer, India was known as Eastern Ethiopia. Please understand that SGI, Buddhist leader Daisaki Kato, is not a friend to black people. And he is a great liar. Daisaki Kato used his influence to perpetrate a fraud in his fictional book, The Living Buddha. 300 years after the death of the Buddha, we have literary writings that talk about the black people of India. Now, I want to introduce you to one of the greatest writers. He was an ambassador for Chandragupta Maurya. You see, India started at the time of Alexander the Great. He tried to conquer India. And he ran up against these black people who had 80,000 elephants. They were called the Nandas. Now, after Alexander bagged up, years later, Chandragupta Maurya conquered the Nandas. Now, under Chandragupta Maurya, he had a grandson who was very famous in Buddhism, and his name was called Asoka, Asoka the Great. And he left writings, not in no Sanskrit, but he left writings in the Pali language. He left edifice and writings. You would see it at the Apodeck Temple in 
Naga Sudan. The Nubians were Buddhists. The, it was Herodotus who says it, that Muro was the cradle of the Gymnosophists. They were not called Buddhists, they were called Gymnosophists. Now, one of the things I want you to look up, look up the name Megathenes. Now, Megathenes, he lived 350 to 290 BC. He was a Greek ethnographer and explorer in the Hellenistic period and an author of the work called the Indica. He became an ambassador of Seleucus I, the Cato of the Seleucid dynasty to Chandragupta Maurya in India. Now, you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we can go back to 185 BC. You see, from the time of the Buddha's death and to 185 BC, there was a general, his name was Push Yamitra. Now, look up the name Push Yamitra. Nitran Shonen talks about Push Yamitra. You see, the Roman, the Mauryan general was at a parade and Push Yamitra was a general and he killed the Muryan king in broad daylight and he took over India and he became the king. He put a bounty on all of the Buddhists and they started a Buddhist cult, a Brahman cult rather. They had a Brahman cult that ran all the Buddhists. The Buddhists had to go to Nero or to Nubia, they had to leave India. Buddhism left, left India and pushed Yamitra control all of India. Now, we move to 150 or at least 100 years into the AD and we meet King Kanishka. Now, King Kanishka is important in history because under this white king, Kanishka, they rewrote Buddhist history by changing the Buddha from black to white. Look at the Gandhara images of the Buddha. Under King Kanishka, they created a new Buddhism that was separated by race, culture, and language. A man who was a former Brahmin, his name was As for Gosha. Ashwagosha and King Kanishka got together and they created a new Buddhism that was separated by race, language, and culture. This new Buddhism was called Mahayana Buddhism. And Mahayana Buddhism was characterized by the new language of Sanskrit. Sanskrit was a language that was created by a Brahmin by the name of Panani. Now the earliest archaeological records of Sanskrit is called the Rudra Dhinam. There is no Sanskrit during the time of the Buddha. Sanskrit came up in the Shaka era. This Brahman by the name of Panini created a new language from the Pali language or from the black language called Sanskrit. As we tell you the earliest record, archaeological record of Sanskrit is the Rudra Dhinam. You see, there was no Sanskrit. Now, the reason King Kanishka is very important is because this white king rewrote history. Now, the original of the fourth Buddhist council took place in Selman, which is now called Sri Lanka, in 29 BC. Now, just about 200 years later, when the white king Kanishka took over Buddhism, he and a former Brahmin by the name of Ashwagosha created what we now know as Mahayana Buddhism. And creating Mahayana Buddhism, they separated Buddhism by race, culture and language. Panini invented 
what is called the Sanskrit language. Now, King Kanishka and Ashvagosha carried on, or they put together what was called their own fourth Buddhist council. They got together with their group of people and they rewrote all the Buddhist history. They gave Theravada Buddhism, which is meaning the teaching of the elders, a new name. And they called that Hinayana, which means lower teachings. And then they called what they got Mahayana, higher teachings. Now, you can see in the Gahara carvings, and this is about 150 AD into the AD, when they changed the image of the Buddha from black to white. Now, you see the image of the Buddha. He's looking like a Greek. He's got the straight hair. Now, you got to understand now that before Buddhism got to China, it didn't get to China until 1,000 years after the death of the Buddha, and Buddhism did not get to Japan until 1,400 years of, after the Buddha. Now, Buddhism was in Africa 1,000 years before it ever got to Japan. So when you talk to the Japanese people, when you talk to Asians, they treat us as if they've given us Buddhism. However, when you look at the history of Buddhism, you will find that the Buddha was a man of African descent, and this is some of the oldest black history. Now, Nichiren Shonen writes in the Go Show, he writes that Brahmanism is the started teachings of Buddhas who came before Shakyamuni Buddha. You see, the word Hindu you cannot find the word Hindu in ancient writing texts. Dr. Behemru and Becker discovered that, that the word Hindu did not even exist. See, these guys have created a fraud. See, when they created the fraud of the Sanskrit fraud, they got together and created what is known as the Vedic culture, or the Vedic teachings. The Vedic teachings, what they did was, they wrote that Sanskrit came 1,500 years before the Buddha, and they came up with what is called the Aryan Invasion Theory, and they made Sanskrit the oldest language. However, when you look at archaeological, anthropological, genetic science, literary science, we find that there was no such thing as an Aryan invasion, there was no such thing as this Vedic culture contemporary or even um, before or during the time of the Buddha. The Buddha came from Magadha and Magadha came from the Harappan civilization. I am Anthony Alf Elmore, President and founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, giving you a Black Buddhist lecture to stating that Science and history proves that the Buddha is black. Thank you very much.